In Game 16 of 1951 World Championship match, the world champion Mikhail Batvinik gave a masterclass in chess strategy. By playing slow, maneuvering game and blending deep positional ideas with waiting moves, he gradually decreased Bronstein's alertness, which led to a critical mistake by the challenger. This mistake let Batvinik carry out advantageous exchanges and get a position with a dominating knight against a dead bishop. After that, he started a sophisticated play on both sides. First, he created a weakness on Bronstein's king side, and then took control over the only open file on the queen side, thus approaching the enemy king from all sides and gradually squeezing his opponent's position until Bronstein was almost in Zugzwang. Bronstein started with d4 and Batvinik played Dutch defense, f5, g3, knight f6, bishop g2, bishop e7, knight c3, castle kingside, e3, and of course Batvinik is playing his favorite stonewall variation, d5. Knight e2. Instead of more natural knight f3, Bronstein plays knight e2, which was actually employed by Batvinik himself in the first game of this match, when Batvinik played white pieces. c6, b3, and Batvinik moves the already developed piece for the second time in the opening. Bishop d6, which isn't really recommended by the orthodox uh, opening principles. However, the position is closed and white cannot open up the center in order to punish uh, black for neglecting the development because e4 is impossible because black pawns has a full control over e4 square and the position is closed and white cannot open it up that's why black can afford moving the same piece twice in the opening and the idea behind bishop d6 is to prepare queen e7 taking under full control the important diagonal because one of the possible plans for white uh, in Stonewall is to prepare bishop a3 after a4, for example, which would lead to the exchange of dark squared bishops, which is always in white's favor in Stonewall variation, because by playing d5, e6, and f5, black seriously weakened the dark squares, especially um, e5 square, and the main defender of one of the main defenders of dark squares is of course dark squared bishops bishop and if the bishops are exchanged black would have serious problems defending the dark squares that's why black tries to avoid this exchange castle kingside and queen e7 now white won't be able to play bishop a3 and black would retain the dark squared bishop queen c2 Knight e4. So this e4 square is crucial for black. And the knight is greatly placed on e4. While e5 square is crucial for white. And white knights uh, will try to occupy this square. Black is uh, offering the exchange. But Bronstein avoids the exchange and plays knight d1. In order to reroute this knight through b2 to d3 and e5. Knight a6. Knight b2, bishop d7. The light squared bishop is black's main problem in stonewall variation because all black pawns are placed on light squares. So this bishop is limited by its own pawns. And one of the ways of activating this bishop is to reroute it through d7 to e8 and h5, from which it can be either exchanged uh, with one of uh, white's pieces or take part in the possible attack c5 so white is playing on the queen side in uh, the stonewall variation while black is playing on the king side trying to um, create some threats uh, to white king bishop c7 knight d3 bishop e8 b4 knight b8 bishop b2 a5 a3 Knight d7, so knight wasn't doing anything on a6, and now it's rerouted through d7 to f6 in order to reinforce the control of a crucial e4 square, or possibly jump to g4 uh, if the appropriate time comes. Knight e5, knight f6, so but Vinik isn't in a hurry. He is just slowly maneuvering because he is leading in the match, 
and he's playing black pieces so Branstein is playing white and he needs a victory so Branstein uh, needs to do something active and knowing Branstein's impulsive character but Vinnik is just waiting for Branstein's mistake Knight c1 the knight is rerouted through uh, d3 to either e5 reinforcing the control of over e5 square or to f4 possibly and but Vinnik makes a very strong move g5 the idea is to ensure the e4 square for the knight once and for all because while knight is on e4 white can push it away by playing f3 but now black is going to play g4 and if white plays f3 this pawn would be simply exchanged Branstein played f3 but it doesn't change anything black still plays g4 and this pawn will disappear from f3 in any case knight d3 g takes f bishop takes f3 knight e4 so now knight is greatly placed on e4 while white knight is greatly placed on e5 rook e1 knight f6 knight f4 so the second knight is also very well placed on f4 because black has weakened f4 square by moving the g pawn now this knight cannot be pushed away by a pawn king h8 rook e2 knight g5 attacking the bishop bishop g2 rook g8 bishop c3 Branstein is rerouting the bishop to e1 in order to reinforce the possible weakness on g3 because the rook is already attacking it the bishop uh, might attack it and the knight from e4 also is attacking it so uh, it's a good idea to defend it knight e4 bishop e1 a takes b a takes b knight h5 again offering the exchange and again Branstein avoids the exchange because he has a, a little bit of uh, space advantage and when you have space advantage you should avoid uh, the exchanges and also he doesn't want to simplify the position he needs a victory so he wants uh, the contrary he wants to complicate the game knight f6 so but Vinnik again continues his slow maneuvers and waiting moves queen b1 bishop h5 attacking the rook rook b2 threatening b5 opening the b file and creating a weakness on c6 that's why the bishop returns to e8 in order to take under control b5 square now white cannot play b5 rook a2 the rooks are exchanged and now white is threatening to play queen a7 which would be unpleasant that's why bishop b8 queen b2 h6 knight f4 king h7 king h1 knight g4 attacking e3 the knights are exchanged bishop h3 attacking the rook of course rook cannot retreat to g8 that would be a blunder because of simple tactics knight takes e6 and bishop takes f5 check and black is losing the queen that's why the rook retreats to g5 defending f5 queen a1 bishop f7 defending e6 bishop isn't doing anything on h3 so it returns to g2 rook g8 bishop f3 knight f6 queen b2 knight g4 so but Vinnik just maneuvers with his knight queen e2 knight f6 waiting moves rook g1 knight e4 and here uh, Branstein could have played b5 which was recommended by Salof Lor but Vinnik second who uh, annotated this game and Branstein in his annotations also agrees that b5 would be better starting some active play on the queen side but Branstein just place as Batvinik. he isn't in a hurry and he also uh, slowly maneuvers passively and he played rook f1 Batvinik played queen e8 reinforcing the control strengthening the control over h5 square and finally Batvinik reached what he has been waiting for for such a long time for Branstein's mistake Branstein made a terrible positional mistake he gives this move two question marks in his annotations he played queen d3 you can pause the video and try to find why this move is such a terrible mistake and how black can exploit it and get almost strategically winning position after this mistake 
So, Bramstein in his annotations explains this mistake. He writes that this bishop could have captured on f4 and exchange on f4 for so many moves, but didn't do it because it wasn't in black's favor, that Bramstein simply forgot about these uh, opportunities. He completely forgot and stopped considering uh, the opportunity for black of capturing on f4 because it really didn't make sense for black before. For example, if in this position, instead of queen e8, what Patvinik played, if he captured on f4, white would simply capture and uh, white would get two active bishops, while black will have a bad bishop on f7. And black doesn't have any advantage whatsoever. On the contrary, white is better. But after queen e8 and after queen d3, by playing queen d3, white moved away the queen from e2 and weakened the control over very important h5 square. And now only two pieces control this square, the bishop on f3 and the knight on f4. The queen isn't controlling the square anymore. And now black eliminates one of the defenders of this square, the knight. Now the exchange is very good for black. Bishop takes f4 and... It turns out that with his next move, black would simply play bishop h5, exchange the light squared bishops, and stay with a great knight against a dead bishop, because the bishop is terrible, because all white pawns are placed on dark squares, and this bishop isn't doing anything. And that means black will get strategically winning position. If g takes f, that's even worse than what happened in the game. Because Bramstein gives the following variation. Bishop h5, offering the exchange. And white, of course, tries to avoid the exchange. But queen g6, taking under full control the open g-file and exerting terrible pressure, threatening checkmate. And if queen c2, defending g2, then bishop d1, attacking the queen. Queen, of course, cannot capture because checkmate in one move. Queen b2 and bishop a4, stopping all possible counterplay. Now b5 is impossible because the bishop took under control this square, and black is much better, maybe even winning. That's why Bronstein captured with e pawn. But now, again, bishop h5, and it turns out that white cannot prevent the exchange of bishops. Floor gives following uh, variations. If bishop takes e4 in order to at least uh, get rid of this terrible knight, then simple d takes e, and black bishop would penetrate and light squares are terribly weakened and also by capturing with d-pawn black opens the d-file and uh, white will have weakness the pawn on d4 would be terribly weak and after queen a3 bishop f3 check king g1 queen h5 the queen is moving to h3 creating checkmating threats then the pawn moves h5 h4 opening g-file the rook becomes a monster and white's position would simply collapse. Or, instead of bishop takes e4, if bishop g2 in order to avoid the exchange, then simple queen a8 and in taking under control the open file and invading on a file. So, in all these variations, black is much better, maybe even winning. That's why Bronstein played queen a3, in order to at least get control over the open a file. However, the game will show that this control is only temporary. And black will get the control over this file very soon. So, of course, Batvinik exchanges the bishops. And now his position is strategically winning. The knight is dominating against the uh, dead bishop on e1. Rook g7, king g2, queen d8, king f1, queen f6. Queen is activating, attacking weakness on d4. Rook d3, def defending it. And h5 threatening to move further and open up the position on the king's side. That's why Bronstein prevents it by playing h4. But now white has a terrible permanent weakness on g3, on the open file, and the knight is also attacking it. And this will force uh, Bronstein to distract his uh, queen from the open file. He will have to move his queen to the defense of king side and after that 
but Vinic will get control over the open A file. Rook g8. So preparing rook a8, because sooner or later this queen will have to move away. And here, uh, but Bronstein made a serious mistake. Instead of queen a7, which was recommended by Flor, attacking the pawn on b7, of course, still he would be much better, even worse, even lost most probably. Instead of this, he made even worse move. He played rook d1, which is a terrible move. He explains this move in his annotations. He writes that he was planning in this position to play. He took his rook and moved it to b3 in order to play b5 and create some counterplay, opening b file and threatening rook b7 check. But when he put his rook on b3, he noticed that d4 pawn would fall if the rook moves and the rook must stay on d file. But he didn't let go of his rook, he was still holding it in his hand, and as he noticed it, he diagonally from b3 moved his rook to d1, so that it keeps an eye on d4 pawn. So, rook d1. Queen g7, attacking g3 three times, uh, that's why queen f3, now black uh, cannot capture, because first black must defend h5, that's why king h6. Now g3 is under attack. That's why white must defend it. King g2. And now, finally, black gets the open a file. So, the position is absolutely winning for black. The knight is dominating over the bishop. There is a weakness on king side which needs constant defense. And also, black is invading from the queen side. So, black is attacking from all sides. From Queen side, king side, and from the front. Rook d3, rook a2 check, king f1, and here Batvinik sold on his next move for 50 minutes. Bronstein explains it in his annotations. He writes that in the previous game, Batvinik also got absolutely winning position in game 15, but he missed the winning move, and the game ended in a draw. That's why he didn't want, he was scared to repeat the same thing. That's why he was looking for the most precise move for 50 minutes. And he found it. It is a simple move, rook a1, simply pinning the bishop. However, now Batvinik was in a terrible time trouble. And for this reason, he will make serious mistakes later in the game. So, rook a1, pinning the bishop, bishop cannot move, the king cannot move as it must defend the bishop. The rook cannot move because it must defend d4. And that means white is almost in Zugzwang. Only queen can move. But queen cannot move far away because it must keep an eye on g3, which is also under attack. So, Brandstein, if rook d1, for example, that is losing on the spot after simple exchange of rooks and g3. That's why Bronstein played queen g2. So, black is absolutely dominating. Black pieces are great, uh, greatly placed, very actively, while white pieces are squeezed in this rectangle and cannot leave it. The bishop is pinned, king cannot move, rook cannot move, and the queen has only two squares. It can only move to... Uh, h2 and g2 after queen g4. So, but Vinik also activates his queen. And now also queen h3 check is a threat besides queen um, g3. So, the queen must defend both of these squares. So, the only moves white has is going back and forth to h2 and g2. Almost Zugzwang. And considering this, but Vinik should have just moved his king for a few times until he reached the time control, winning time, and only then start active play, converting his great advantage. That is what Flor writes in his annotations. Instead of this, however, Batvinik immediately starts active play. So, queen h2, queen g8, rerouting the queen to the open a file. B5. Bronstein tries to do something, uh, to play 
actively at least maybe to create some threats. Queen a8, as his opponent was in time trouble, so he wanted to create some sharp uh, tactical complications. Queen b2, queen a5, threatening simply to capture on e1, rook e3, defending the bishop. C takes b, now Batvinik also has a passed pawn. Rook e2, queen a4, taking under control d1 square, threatening queen d1, king g2, and here Batvinik should have played simply queen d1, which Flor indicates in his annotations, which was winning on the spot, just leaving the pawn unguarded, it isn't important, and it turns out that the bishop cannot move because of checkmate, the rook cannot move as it must uh, defend the bishop, and the queen cannot move because it must defend the rook, and if queen captures on b5, continuing defending the rook, simple rook b1 would follow, attacking the queen, and the queen doesn't have any squares uh, of retreat in order to continue defending the rook, and uh, black is simply winning on the spot. Instead of this, instead of queen d1, Batvinik, however, as he was in a time trouble, played rook d1, attacking d4. However, still, his position is absolutely winning. Bishop f2, defending d4, queen c4, c6. Bronstein again tries to complicate the game. By playing c4, c6, he opens this diagonal for his queen. And if queen manages to penetrate to f8, that would lead to perpetual check, most probably. So, here Batvinik makes another mistake. Instead of simple b takes c, um, which was winning on the spot because queen a3, threatening queen f8 check, doesn't give anything because of simple b4, and after queen a8, again threatening some checks, simple knight f6, defending all important squares, and white simply has one check, after which the knight defends uh, all possible squares uh, of uh, checks with queen. Instead of this, after c6, Batvinik makes another mistake, he captures with his queen on c6. Still, his position is absolutely winning. Queen b4, threatening queen f8 check, queen e8, defending, rook c2. Now, Bronstein's rook is on the open file, but still black is completely winning. Rook d3, <clears throat> bishop e1, queen g8, queen e7, and here Batvinik makes his final mistake. He could have played either b4 or simple rook takes d4, both of which retain the great advantage and black was simply winning. Instead of this, as he was in a terrible time trouble, he captured on g3 and sacrificed the exchange. And after bishop takes g3, queen takes g3, it turned out that he doesn't have anything except perpetual check. And the game ended in a draw, and Batvinik spoiled his great strategic masterpiece. Hit the like button as it's really helpful for the channel growth, and see you in the analysis of game 17.